Aloha Kako. Welcome and good evening. My name is James Eustis, and I'm the president of the Waimea Community Association. Thank you to those joining us online tonight for our regular monthly Waimea Community Association town meeting. Tonight, we'll be hearing important updates relating to the challenges our community faces during this time. I encourage you to follow, like, and subscribe to the Waimea Community Association on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You may also find relevant information and resources on our website at waimeatown.org. We strive to keep our accounts active and up to date. At this point, I would like to recognize the Waimea Community Association board members, our Vice President, Michael Donnelly, our Treasurer, Louis Dubois, our Secretary, Frankie Pang, our Assistant Secretary, Patty Cook, and our Directors, Nancy Carr Smith, Riley Smith, Lani Olson Chong, David Greenwell, and Llewellyn Kumalai. The Waimea Community Association Board is grateful for the support shown by the community to hold virtual town meetings. We have had quite a busy summer. During the month of June, we held a series of virtual forums highlighting the candidates seeking election in Hawaii County. In July, we heard about the plans and policies being implemented by our Waimea schools, public, charter, and independent, and heard a recap to the, close, to the close of the legislative session. And last month, we were grateful to have Lieutenant Governor Josh Green join us again this year to share with us updates on the current public health crisis, and even taking some time to address community questions and concerns. We're also fortunate to hear from a number of organizations that are striving to tackle food insecurity in our communities during this time. Thank you all for your interest in joining these live past meetings and evenings and for viewing and sharing these recordings. You are welcome to revisit these videos on the Waimea Community Association Facebook page or up on the, our YouTube channel. The Waimea Community Association is a nonprofit organization that strives to promote open participation by all of the Waimea community, develop leadership and support the smart growth of the region. If you would like to support the work we have done and help continue our effort in connecting with our community, you are more than welcome to donate and join as a member. If this is something that interests you and you would like to receive more information, please email, it at, email us at waimeacommunityassociation at gmail.com or visit our website at waimeatown.org to, or to download a membership form. You're welcome to mail these forms and your annual dues to the Waimea Community Association at PO Box 2622, Kamala, Hawaii, 96743. This information and more can be found on our website, waimeatown.org. Your contributions and membership allow us to reach out and connect with the community in this setting and support the work the Waimea Community Association has done over the past 60 years. Mahalo. As mentioned, and per our agenda, tonight we will be hearing some important updates from our community and from organizations that share a common goal of supporting our businesses and families, especially during this time of COVID-19. We will begin this evening with a community policing update from our South Pole District Police Captain, Sherry Bird, and following a couple brief community announcements, we will hear from recently re-elected County Council District 9 Councilor Tim Richards to provide us some updates from the Hawaii County Council. We will then learn about Paina by Ocean, an amazing startup company founded by a young Waimea man and his ohana. Following that, we'll have a chance to hear from two of our island's chambers of commerce, Toby Tanaguchi with the Hawaii Island Chamber and Wendy Leros with the Kona Kohala Chamber as they share some insight about the impact and opportunities on our businesses, small and large. And as part of the Waimea Community Association goal to hear from different sectors of our economy during this time, we are pleased to host and learn more from our travel and lodging industry as tonight's keynote. We'll be hearing from Melanie Holt with Kamwela Inn, Kanani Malakawa from Waimea Country Lodge, Ross Birch with Hawaii Island Visitors Bureau, 
Craig Anderson with the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, and Stephanie Donahoe with the Kohala Coast Resort Association. This evening, we are grateful to present you with a full and informative agenda, and time permitting, we will try to capture some of your live questions for our keynote presenters and share your inquiries with our guests towards the end of the meeting. At this time, I would like to start off our virtual meeting by welcoming Captain Sherry Bird to the floor to give us a community policing update. We are grateful to have Captain Bird join us on a regular basis to provide these updates. Captain Bird, the floor is yours. Thanks, James. Hi, everybody. You can hear me okay? Okay, perfect. So last month, I was super stoked to report that we had um, zeros in all of the major crime categories that we report on. Unfortunately, there's been a slight increase for um, August. So as far as robberies, no robberies. We did have one burglary. Um, this is at a Waimea business. There was no forced entry, but an iPad was removed. And then we had two uh, reports of uh, vehicle thefts. In one of those cases, uh, the keys were left in the vehicle in the Waikoloa area. And the vehicle was actually recovered in Hilo. And then the second theft that I talked about, it was two dirt bikes that was uh, chained up at an apartment complex that were uh, taken. And then one vehicle break-in kind of uh, situation and this stemmed from a domestic um, incident. So um, we know who the suspect is in that uh, incident. As far as accidents, slight increases in those as well. We had 20 mi minor traffic accidents. Again, those are your minor fender benders no injuries, and um, we had seven major traffic accidents. Those are the ones with injuries or major damages. Uh, we had eight DUI arrests for the district. Um, and I just wanna talk about traffic accidents just a little bit. Um, in all of those accidents, we found speed, inattention, and or misjudgment were contributing factors. So just again, asking everybody to be aware when you're out driving on the roadway. Um, as far as the police department is concerned, we're out there trying to increase our uh, visibility of our officers. And the idea is um, to encourage safe driving uh, behaviors when you're out on the road. So we just ask everybody to please abide by the, the rules of the road, wear your seatbelt, don't talk on your cell phone, and don't speed. Um, also, you know, um, there's going to be some new changes with the COVID-19 rules for our island. You probably see more of our officers out there. We're being more visible out in the public. We just want to encourage compliance from everybody, you know, so please be mindful of the rules, new rules starting tomorrow through the 19th. Um, we all just want to go back to normal. So if we all can pay attention to the rules and um, stay healthy, um, that's what we're hoping for. That's all I have. Thank you, Captain Bird. I appreciate your updates and spending some time with us here this evening. Thank you. Now for the next minute here, I'd like to just share a couple brief community announcements. Um, first off, with some sad news, actually, especially for our keiki, the Lualai Halloween celebration will not be held this year. And we will share more details about this information on our website and social media accounts in due time. Uh, next, thank you to all those who took the time to vote in our state primary election in August. We are about two months away from the general election and there is still time to register now as a new voter or update your information. The deadline to, re to register for receiving a mail ballot is October 5th. We saw statewide a large increase in our voter turnout, and we hope this trend continues going forward. And lastly, if you have not had a chance yet to complete the 2020 census, we encourage you to please do so. There is an easy process to submit your response online or over the phone. Please visit 2020census.gov for more information. Uh, this important task and civic duty will help determine the disbursement of federal monies to many important community programs, our schools, and our infra and infrastructure projects. Oh, thank you for allowing me to take a, a moment there to announce those. Uh, next up, I'd like to welcome one of our Waimea Community Association board members, Lonnie Olson Chong. Lonnie is also the co-chair of the Waimea Christmas Parade. Lonnie, when you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you, James. Mahalo for the opportunity to take a couple of minutes to update you on what would have been our 60th annual Waimea Twilight Christmas Parade. We were so excited and looking forward to a wonderful celebration for our 60th year, 
However, as we all know, it's just not happening the way we had hoped. As we all know, virtual gatherings are becoming a huge hit these days. That said, we need your help as we put together and plan our very first Big Island Virtual Christmas Light Parade. Watch for details via Facebook, emails, and grapevines as details unfold in the upcoming weeks. Whether you decorate and light your house, your barn, your truck, your trailer, or your tool shed, you and your family can be a part of this celebration. Whether you live in Waimea, Honoka'a, Kohala, Kawilo, Laupohoihoi, Hilo, Puna, Kau, Kona, Kealakekua, or even Waipio Valley, you are a part of our Big Island family and we welcome your participation. The main idea is to decorate, take a short video, and submit it for the light parade. We hope to air the completed video via Facebook and YouTube on December 20th and again on December 24th. In the past, the entry fee for our annual Christmas parade has been a donation to the Big Island Giving Tree. While there is no entry fee for the light parade this year, we do ask for your support by making a donation, donation to the Big Island Giving Tree so we can continue to make a Christmas blessing bag for our kupuna. Mahalo for your time, stay safe, and don't forget to wear your mask. Aloha. Mahalo, Lani. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and presenting that update. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome our council member, Councillor Dr. Tim Richards, um, <clears throat> on behalf of the Hawaii, uh, Hawaii County Council uh, and the work being done there. Councillor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, James, and thanks for putting this together. Uh, someday we'll get back where we'll be seeing people face to face once again, but that's probably in the not too near future. Uh, appreciate it, and I'll just run through some things going on. I know there's a lot on people's mind. Uh, we're getting a lot of different phone calls about a lot of different things. Uh, <clears throat> and first of all, um, COVID-19. Obviously, that's deeply affecting our community uh, across the county, across the state, across the nation. And what are we doing about that? Well, as we know, our economy is in a bad way. And the biggest needs that we're seeing right now from the county perspective is that we've got to get our population fed. And so there's a lot of efforts right now with a whole bunch of food drops and food drives and, and all that. So a lot of efforts are going into that right now. Um, we, I, I have probably the, the most bothering thing right now is the fact that we're seeing new people coming to these food drops again. So we are by no means out of the, the woods on this. And I expect the, um, the need is going to be increasing. Now with that, uh, I'm sure you have seen that the county council each received $100,000 of the COVID money for us to detail as we best can in our different districts. And long and the short of it is um, where most of that money is going to go is into these food drops. There'll be some funds going into some other programs, but trying to, again, get food out to the community as a whole. It's going to be a rough time and coming back to the council as a whole. We saw a decrease in the budget. You know, we had that 7% cut um, back in the May budget that was presented. I don't think that's enough. And I think we're gonna be facing some real tough financial times coming forward. Our economy overall is about, or was about eight and a half billion dollars uh, for our GDP. 40% of that was from tourism. And we know that went from 40% to essentially zero. We have a lot of unemployment on this island and we are going to be facing some big challenges. Now, um, <clears throat> everyone knows that my drum that I beat is all about agriculture. And I believe that this is a time we can actually put a lot of efforts into agriculture and get things going for agriculture, but that's going to take some public policy shifts. One of the public policies that we have to be mindful of as we work on this is our transportation of getting our agriculture to our markets. And everyone saw the increase for Young Brothers and their tariff uh, was approved for 46% increase. Initially, back in February, I had submitted testimony against the increase that they were seeking, uh, speaking on behalf of all agriculture. I was hoping, you know, then we had COVID-19 hit um, and they got into a very bad way. If we're looking at our economy as a whole, 
without intrastate transportation, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble, agriculture included. And so I had advocated for them to have an increase, a modest increase, but leave agriculture out of it. Unfortunately, they didn't. And so that's another thing we're going back to work on. One of the areas that we're working on with the intrastate shipping, Young Brothers, is the waters around the state have been designated the Daniel Akaka Marine Highway System. And this is a federal program that, though there's not any money directly attached to that program, there may be some ways that we can actually seek some funding for that. This is the big picture for our economy as a whole, and specifically the, um, the agriculture component, because again, for agriculture, if we're gonna move agriculture forward, we have to get those markets, and we have to get those markets with our transportation. Touching on a few other things, um, it's very dry right now. I want to remind everybody we're facing a, a drought at this point and be mindful of that. Watch any fires or anything like that. We want to be very mindful that we have a increased fire risk in our district. And, you know, District 9, North South Kohala, we're prone to some pretty big range fires, so please be careful of that. Uh, one of the programs I did work on with the through this whole COVID thing and all was what was called the Bridges Program. And that was to help agriculture. And initially when I had was working on that, I thought we would be funding agriculture or subsidizing it. I flipped that and the way we worked on it was actually to have the agriculture economy keep going forward by purchasing the product, whether it be like we bought goat cheese, beef, vegetables, and then turn around and donate it to the the uh, food basket primarily, but the Giving Tree got uh, was part of that, and other recognized entities to again put the products out. The idea there was to keep the economy of agriculture going, not subsidize it, but keep the economy going because as we go into our recovery phase, we need that to come forward. Uh, James, I don't want to keep talking, and you know I can keep talking on a lot of different things. My focus for the future, the next two years, we're gonna be working hard on the economy. Uh, we've got a lot of things to take care of in our community, but one of my big focuses is gonna be that economic stimulation so we can get done. So thanks, James, appreciate it, and I don't think I went over my time. No, you have a little more time if you'd like to mention anything else, Counselor. Uh, I went through the, the, the big list there. Um, no, I think, what we can do is let's save some time on the end and I can answer any questions. Oh, let me add one more thing. I did have a question come through concerning the uh, repaving of the road, Mana to um, uh, Mud Lane. And the question was, apparently there's a rumor out there that um, that is how it's gonna be as far as not being resurfaced or um, the real rough parts and the, the dips and all that. The long and the short of that is no, that is all gonna be leveled out and it will all be finished up in the, in the, probably by the end of October is what they're looking at having things done. The total resurfacing, that's gonna be um, probably, well, it'll be probably first part of next year, but it will be a good road by the time we get done in the next six weeks. All right, so that's it, James. Turn it back Thank to you. Thank you, Counselor. Thank you. And to kind of piggytail off what the Counselor mentioned there in regards to the highways or information about that. Any viewers out there, you're welcome to attend the South Kohala Traffic Safety Committee meetings. Uh, those are held virtually as well. And you can find information on the waimeatown.org or email sktscsecretary at gmail. So that kind of body of individuals, they talk about some of the road projects out there and some of the upcoming ones as well, if you have any interest in those projects. Uh, so thank you, Counselor. Thank you for your time here with us. Um, for this next portion of tonight's agenda and meeting, we thought to spotlight an uplifting, very positive story of entrepreneurship during this time. We are pleased to be joined by the Kanekoa Ohana, led by Kamahao Ocean, a recent Waimea Middle School student, and now at Honaka High. And he is joined by his sister, Jadine, this evening. Uh, he is also supported by his, uh, I believe his other sister as well, and his mother, Wardine, who has her own hair salon, and their father, Jason, who is also the executive chef at the Waikoloa Beach Marriott. So Paina by Ocean has helped to support our local farmers and excite food lovers with their Paina bags that include easy to follow recipes and tutorials. So thank you for joining us and please take it away. Thank you, thanks for having us. 
<laughs> so yeah, I'm Kamahawa Ocean Kaneko. I'm the founder of Clean Up by Ocean, and this is my sister, Jenny. Hello. So yeah, we are the founders of Clean Up by Ocean. What we do are we make paina bags that we disperse to our community, but we all started from March 28th. My dad just got, oh, well, we just got, my dad just got furloughed from the hotel. And that's when everything started hitting and it all just shut down due to COVID. So we wanted to personally go and visit the farms. So our two main farmers that were supporting the hotels were JA Farms and Luis Fam Rincon Family Farms. So we went and saw them. Luis, he's a strawberry farmer, mainly. So during that, his season, all of his strawberries are just rotting on the vines and JA Farms who grow a lot, a lot of the lettuce and greens was just tilling under all of his vegetables. So that night, I just talked to my family and we thought what we could do. And that's when we came up with Paina by Ocean. So that's sort of how, um, you know, the whole idea sparked was, you know, seeing a lot of these restaurants and hotels closing and kind of Ocean um, coming to the family and saying like, you know, what can we do? How can we help? So literally we had put together um, some ideas and we thought about creating um, paina bags, which would be bundles of all locally big island source produce so that we could help the farmers move to the community and give them direct access to community members. Um, at the same time, you know, making it affordable. Um, so it's a true model of sustainability within our own community. Um, that first week we started with a goal of how many? So we started with a goal of our first week selling paina bags. We had 25 smoked meat bundles. <laughs> by the end of that day, we sold out on all that 25. So we decided that we're gonna push it to 100 bags. We sold that out again and now We've been doing 200 bags every week. Yeah, so our full farmer's market, you know, we created a website to make it safe and easy for a lot of families to shop online with the click of a button. Uh, you could scroll through all the produce that was available that week from the farmers, and then they could just drive up. We have distributions every Tuesday in Waimea and Waikoloa, um, and families can just drive up. We load everything into their car. Um, and I think what makes Paina by Ocean really special is that it's not just these food bundles but we have a lot of items a la carte as well so families can choose what vegetables what proteins maybe make sense for their family um, and in addition to that you know we started with Luis Rincon and um, Flavio with JA farms we started with four farms actually uh, Hamakua mushrooms also and um, wild tomatoes and then from that four that first initial week um, we have now grown to supporting over 40 uh, big island ranchers farmers uh, fishermen um, as well as the distri distribution companies that were affected by the shutdowns of hotels and restaurants. So, so we saw um, Armstrong Produce, they're big supporters of us as well, and they help us with a lot of products. So. Yeah, and along with that, um, Kamahao has been great. He keeps busy the whole summer. He was curating some recipes. And so we do film short recipe tutorials. It's meant to be for families who can go ahead and cook with the entire Ohana. And that's, we put a lot of thought into the bundle. So it all makes sense. Um, and we've just been getting tremendous feedback from the community, which has really supported us in carrying on um, families that are saying, you know, they're getting more active in the kitchen with their kids, with the entire Ohana, and people just telling us that they're eating fresher and better than they ever had before. Um, and then down to the farmers who, you know, just going back to Flavio with JA Farms, who you know, said that he only had so many months savings to save his farm. Um, and now through this whole time, I won't say that we're the only reason why, but he's been able to keep on all of his, uh, so, or all of his workers. Um, and none of them have been laid off and they're planting more. And so we encourage that. Yeah. you have anything else to say? I'm okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a fun journey. Um, we just wanted to say thank you to all of the community who has supported us. Uh, this was intended to be an eight week project and we are now on week 20. Um, we look forward to continuing so long as people want to continue supporting us. Um, just some fun things to touch on. We are so proud to also partner with a lot of foundations. We talk about these food drops that are, that are happening all over the island. Uh, today, in fact, we partnered with the Iron Man Foundation. We did a drop at the Waikoloa Beach Marriott with 200 bundles that went out to all the furloughed associates. 
Um, we're partnering with the Feed Kohala Initiative where we will be doing 300 bundles this month alone for the families in Kohala that's part of the giving tree. Um, and then we are also working with some of the resorts on the coastline who will be doing distributions for their employees. So lots of projects and uh, Kamaha'o will also be participating in the local licious contest. Be on the lookout. We will be sending that out for all the keiki in the community to hopefully partner with the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival to get their culinary years going. So um, if you have any more questions for us or you want to learn more about Paina by Ocean, we're online at... Paina by Ocean on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So you can go check us out. And PainaByOcean.com. So thank you. We see many faces who support us every week. Thank you, folks. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Mahalo Nui. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening and for sharing your work, your passion to cook and share, and ultimately uh, your effort in supporting our local farmers. So thank you very much. For this next portion, um, and our goal to hear from our different sectors of our local economy during this time, we thought, it, we thought to start things off with some updates and insight from two of our island's Chamber of Commerce. And we are grateful to be joined by the president of the Hawaii Island Chamber of Commerce, Toby Taniguchi, and the Kona Kohala Chamber of Commerce, Executive Director, Wendy Laros. Uh, Mr. Taniguchi, the floor is yours when you're ready. Thank you very much, James. Aloha, everyone. Uh, I am, yes, the new president of the Hawaii Island Chamber of Commerce, just installed on Sunday. Mayo Joshioka, our executive director, our executive officer, sends his regrets for not being able to be here this evening. Tonight, I wanted, in my time, I wanted to share with you a few things, uh, maybe a little bit about the uh, Hawaii Island Chamber, um, how East Hawaii or, or Windward Hawaii is doing relative to business during this pandemic how the business culture is, and then finally, um, any positive stories that, that we came across, okay? So with regards to that, um, the Hawaii Island Chamber of Commerce is a 501c6 uh, organization, which is a business leader slash chamber. We started over 122 years ago in 1898, initially as a businessman's club, but throughout this history, the organization has supported business uh, as well, um, and, and, and building uh, projects such as the Hilo Breakwater, uh, the creation of the national park surrounding Kilauea Volcano, uh, the construction, for example, of the federal building on Waianuiui Avenue over in Hilo. Currently, we have about 300 members, uh, which are area businesses, local nonprofits, as well as professionals. And our mission is to assist businesses and promote Hawaii Island. The Hawaii Island Chamber provides leadership via uh, services and advocacy, for example, for the businesses in the community, while simultaneously promoting economic well-being for the entire Hawaii Island as a whole. Um, first um, topic I'd like to cover is, you know, how is uh, how is Hilo, how are Hilo businesses doing and surviving um, during this pandemic? Generally speaking, East Hawaii businesses are doing uh, the best they can given the current situation. However, we think there is in the near future possibly a greater slowdown might occur due to the rising COVID positive cases, as you all read about here in Hilo. Um, businesses all over town have made staffing adjustments and cuts. They've made reductions in services as, as offered, as well as cut back hours of operations. Um, restaurants, for example, have temporary closed to due to positive COVID tests. For example, Leong's Chinese restaurant over on the main highway uh, had to discontinue service. Uh, other restaurants have totally as well as discontinue dine-in services and are only offering uh, takeout options. Um, Debbie Ching Mayalba, for example, owns uh, uh, two very popular restaurants in Hilo, Ken's Pancake House and uh, Pond's Restaurant. In a recent interview, she indicated that her Ken's Pancake House uh, dropped revenue of, of about 62%. Uh, her Pond's Restaurant saw a revenue decline of about 47%. Uh, if you go back and you look at the um, University of Hawaii Economic Research Organization studies uh, or, or, or data collected in July of this year, 77% of Hawaii company businesses who applied to or who responded to the survey, I'm sorry, both applied and received PPP loans, uh, payroll protection loans. The same uh, In the same study, 16% of the business said their revenue was down 10%, 21% of the business says their revenue was down 30%. Uh, Twenty percent said it was down fifty percent. Seven percent said it was down seventy percent. Eight and a half percent said it was down ninety percent. 
uh, 11 percent of the respondents said that essentially they were down 90 to 100 percent in their revenues meaning no or essentially no revenue coming in at all uh, 11 percent reported no change in revenue volume while a small uh, percentage of two percent of the, of the surveys uh, indicated they had a slight increase in business so understandably, East Hawaii, with a larger population um, of businesses catering to Kama'aina patrons, as opposed to the hospitality industry, showed a little less severe revenue loss. But despite these losses, um, most uh, businesses remain open or partially open, and 13% of them reported that they have completely shut, shut down. Okay, Liko Lehua, for example, which is a popular restaurant in Hilo, recently closed its Pawahi Street location and scaled back to a much smaller location up the hill in, in Kalmana. Um, so, um, in, in back in July as well, uh, when, when the respondents were polled, you know, if uh, tourism, and I think my good friend Ross Burke will talk about this a little later, but um, um, if tourism was closed so off October, what does that mean to your business? 30% said they would anticipate more staff cuts. And 68% said my business isn't going to survive. Okay, so so not the best situation overall. You know, uh, uh, looking at other areas is how how was the um, how would I characterize the culture? You know, how are they doing? Is there shutdowns or vacancies or, or not uh, inability to make rents? Um, you know, no firm data that we have right now is, is available to date. Our organization has received one notification from a member discontinuing their membership in the organization due to uh, financial losses uh, uh, due to COVID. Yeah, 70% um, of the businesses um, in Hawaii County has made adjustments to their businesses in regards to social justice um, distancing and precautions, and 9% uh, has changed to an entirely different model, for example, just curbside pickup only. only. Yeah. So, in all of this, or well, what's the light, or is there any light in regards to what's going on in, in, in at least in Kilo, or from what we see? So, out of um, adversity um, comes creativity, similar to um, to Palina by Ocean. Uh, just just talk to us about um, businesses continue to change the way um, and change their marketing strategies to come up with innovative ways to accommodate their customers' needs. Um, they have put remarkable effort in instituting safety measures to protect both customers and patrons and their business partners. Hilo Fish, for example, which is a whole food, a wholesale seafood provider here in East Hawaii, has reached out to the retail market and is offering you know, premium seafood products uh, in their convenient Ohana, Ohana boxes. Um, they're either pre-selected boxes or a la carte options um, where customers you know, can build their own box for takeout. Uh, fourth generation Yamada furniture, uh, fourth generation run Yamada furniture store has pivoted um, to holding um, only or to holding only pre scheduled appointments with potential customers and offering a virtual showroom and 24 7 online chats through their website. Um, Restaurant Puhil Grill, over in Hilo, only a, who only a month ago moved to the formerly Liko Lehua um, location in Hilo it started to offer started offering Ohana meals or picnic party packs featuring family style um, pre-selected meals uh, based on a family of four on selected nights so overall um, you know people are you know businesses are pivoting and are looking for other and creative ways to serve the customers um, here in Hilo and here in the Hawaii the United Way we will continue to support our membership and business community and business community by sharing pertinent information which can aid in their operations. We'll offer or continue to offer webinars and presentations on topics of relevance to business and to the business community who might who are, who are struggling with the effects of this economic uh, downturn. We'll continue our mission of assisting our businesses and in advocacy and in partnership with our sister chambers such as Wendy over at the uh, Kona Pahala uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, Ross, uh, actually, over pool over at the Japanese Chamber and the other chambers island wide. So, lastly, um, James, you know, we certainly appreciate being afforded the opportunity to partner with you folks and the esteemed uh, or and the esteemed organizations on this call this evening. Uh, we uh, we are appreciative of being uh, being able to work together to better our island community. So, thank you very much. Mahalo, Toby. Thank you so much. And uh, next, I'd like to welcome uh, Ms. Wendy Leros with the Kona Koala Chamber. Wendy, the floor is yours when you're ready. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. And yes, just like Toby said, we are working on trying to partner and really come together. And so we do have quite a few chambers on this island. And so it's, it's, it's time to do that. We do it often for some of uh, the initiatives, but just even yesterday we all met and talked about what we can do together because the, the more you come together, the stronger you are and it's all one island. So, so the Kona Kohala Chamber of Commerce is, is a lot younger than the Hawaii Island Chamber. We started in 1968 and so just over 50 years and and a lot of what we do just like a lot of the chambers in the nation is to provide leadership and advocacy so business advocacy you get all the businesses together you figure out what's important to you and then you go out there and try to influence decision makers so that's the the idea behind the advocacy so uh, we provide that advocacy for west hawaii and then our vision is to promote business and individual opportunity, respect for culture and natural resources, very, very important, and, and the quality of life in our community. That's our vision for the work that we do. And then our values, the advocating, advocacy, networking, education, sustainability is also very important to us and aloha. And so I, I'm trying this out. I, you know, I've, I've done these presentations now for a while, but this time I'm gonna, going to introduce you to our board because if you see who the, the chamber is is business they're businesses but they're people so these are the board members mark leong he's our board chair he's with lex brody's lex brody's is not only in kona but i believe in waimea and hilo so uh, mark leong is our board chair our immediate past chair is porter devries he's a lawyer here in town and in honolulu we also have Dennis Boyd. He's our chair elect with West Hawaii Small Business Development Center. We have uh, Bank of Hawaii Hobbs Lawson with, uh, um, uh, he does a lot of things, also Rotary, very, very connected to the community. Jonathan Mitchell. So this is where, you know, with Waimea Community Association, it's important to know that when we say West Hawaii, we actually say North Kohala, South Kohala, North Kona, South Kona, that's what we represent. I know that most of the time Waimea is considered North Hawaii, but, but you guys are all part of uh, uh, West Hawaii and, and what we, we do. So Parker Ranch, you know, definitely a member, and also we have Jonathan Mitchell as one of our, our board members. Randy Kirahara, he's got a, a few businesses that include Creative Arts Hawaii and Parker Ranch Store, which I'm sure many of you have, have been in. It's a beautiful store. And we've also have Sharon Sakai. She was actually raised, born and raised in Kohala. And she's our North Kona Vice Chair. She's with Kona'iki uh, Shores here in uh, West Hawaii. Pam Latinas, she is our South Kona Vice Chair. So these are our regional Vice Chairs. She's with Venture Sotheby's International Realty. Nancy Sakamoto, also um, one of our board members with Kona Commons. I'm sure many of you have been to Kona Commons. And if you didn't know, they're, they're opening up their old Navy store soon, so that's exciting. And Doug Simons, he's with Canada, France, Hawaii Telescope, and he's also one of our board members. And so, you know, a really great group of folks. We've got people, a um, couple more, Dale Suzaki, she's our board member. She's uh, one of our past chairs. Her grandfather was actually one of the founding board members of the Kona Kohala Chamber. She's from South Kona. And Laura Varney with Hospice. And the, the idea behind seeing these smiling faces is to just understand that a chamber is the people, it is the businesses, but you know, it's really about community. And these people are all volunteers, just like Toby, volunteers, and they're serving the community by being involved with the, with the chamber. Um, and so also Ross Birch, who's on the line, who's going to talk about tourism, but he is also the chair of the Japanese chamber. Our membership, we have about 480 members. Members are businesses. About 60% of those are small businesses with one, or, one to 10 employees. Uh, we have the people, the representatives, we have over 1,000 people associated with our chamber. We do events, we do meetings, and we do networking, all kinds of networking things. So you better believe we had to do quite a pivot with uh, what was happening with, with COVID because mostly what we would do is get together face-to-face -to -face in large gatherings. So we've had to, to, change, to change our tune on that. So lots and lots of virtual connections. Uh, we're doing a membership drive right now. 
these are just some of the reasons it's important to be a member. When the members come in, we help them market themselves. It's an opportunity to build relationships. And then voice of business, that's what the advocacy is all about. We, we figure out what those issues are, and then we, we go and we talk to people like Tim and say, hey, Tim, what, you know, what's going on? So you know, what we do is we, we really want to work with our county and state government and, and work together. And so that's what we do. I'm not going to go too far into all the different things, but we definitely had to do some major pivots when COVID started because we had a golf tournament scheduled, we had luncheon scheduled. So what we've been doing is really upping our, our social media and promoting our members. So for our members and our businesses, uh, of course, so many are tied to tourism in West Hawaii. And when the, all the, there was of course the shutdown for everyone, but then when we also had all of the quarantines in place, even the last one, the quarantine for the inner island, that was actually, um, that hurt because even the Kama'aina economy opening back up, we actually had travelers and visitors from other islands. And so that was too bad. That just happened this last month. But what we're trying to do to help is really get the word out there and help our members promote themselves. So we do a lot of social media, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And it's really nice because some people like this is Gary, he's with PNS Plumbing. You know, he he's kind of a one man show. He is out there repairing things. So what happens is he needs to make sure that and if he's a member, he takes advantage of these services and has the whole social media marketing because he's actually a member. So we do a lot of the promotions. I'm not going to go through um, a lot of this, but we do have some of our members that are, I'm going to go, I'll make sure. These members are a Lee circle. They really do help us uh, quite a bit. Um, so we also have on here Bank of Hawaii, Fairmont, Altris, Hawaii and Electric, Mauna Kea. I know Craig's on the call today. And so just a lot of support from businesses uh, for our chamber. And so thank you to all of those, those members. And I'm not so sure on time, but just uh, we do quite a few things with educational webinars to help businesses. Um, I think Toby talked a little bit about the loans and things. So paycheck protection loans came through the SBA, Small Business Administration. So what we do is really uh, try to make sure there's some education out there for small businesses and still, you know, there still needs to be a lot of that communication. We do education about employment law. We do networking. We're doing some virtual networking. We do a lot of meetings, all virtual now, lots of committees so people can connect. And we also do uh, events. We're still doing events. So uh, next week, we're going to meet with the Major General James B. Gerard. He is the Commanding General of the 25th Infantry Division. And U.S. Army is going to talk to us about Pohakaloa and just what the U.S. Army in Hawaii is doing. We're also going to meet up with our candidates. So we're going to meet up with Ikai Gamarzo next week and I believe it's next week and then um, do a little interview as kind of similar to what you were just talking about, James. You know, you do the interviews. We, were, we weren't brave enough to do all 15, though, prior to the, the primary, so we waited. So thank you guys for doing your interviews. It was extremely helpful. So now we're just going to um, meet with uh, Mitch and both Ikaika. And so we've got some of those things going on. And I think the two primary things that we did during COVID and still do is act as a communications hub to try to make sure our businesses, small businesses, know what's going on, where to get the money to help them get through this this time, and what are those proclamations and rules and orders, because so much has happened. We're already on, what, the 12th, I think, proclamation and the 11th rule, and it gets, it, it's a lot for people. So we try to take that in and just spit back out what is really important for the business owners. And so we have a website. We uh, do advocacy, as mentioned, and I just want to end with that. One of the things that we've been working on for a couple of years now is permitting. We have a permitting task force. It's one of our key priorities. And with COVID right now, expediting permitting, making sure that the system is efficient is extremely important because construction is another, another industry that could really help us economically 
during this time. So I know Tim talked about agriculture and yes, agriculture too. So we're, you know, we're all looking at ways to make sure that the economy can still move forward and, and people can still work. So permitting task force, very active. And then I also sit on a, um, uh, it's called the House Select Committee for COVID-19 Economic and Financial Preparedness. And it's a place for West Hawaii and Hawaii Island. Miles Yoshioka also sits on this with Hawaii Island Chamber. And so we are able to, to talk about what's going on on the neighbor islands and it's a statewide group. And right now they're primarily working on tracking the money. So COVID money is coming into the state, $9.2 billion, not just the state, but to businesses and individuals and things. And then, um, then also uh, they're also putting together a whole communications campaign and then doing some just basic oversight. So this is a state, state of Hawaii, State of Hawaii House Select Committee, and it's it's really important. This is the kind of thing where, you know, you talk about advocacy. This is a, a venue, a platform to have a voice, and especially in these COVID times when you know we're meeting virtually, we actually do have a seat at the table, and we don't have to fly all the way to Honolulu. So it's it's been it's been a good thing. So so that's just a, a little bit of what we're doing as far as businesses and things certainly many of our businesses are directly tied to tourism they are in dire straits this is not a comfortable time most every one of our businesses uh, that needed it applied for the paycheck protection and the economic injury disaster loans but those funds are really starting to run out and then just as of today i'll end with the county money came through, so it went from federal to state to county, and then those grants went out, and I believe Stephanie will talk about the grant that they got, but there are now, today, you can apply as a small business for up to $10,000 in a grant from, it's from the County of Hawaii, but they're pushing it out through Hawaii Community Federal Credit Union and some other credit unions. So, so be sure to look that up, it's probably gonna go fast, and so yeah, their application's open today, and it, Looks like it's a it should be a fairly streamlined application process if you if you need some money, and so that's where you can get the money right now. And um, and with that, uh, I'll end. Thank you so much for the invitation. So happy to be here. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate you joining us, and um, thank you to Toby and Wendy for your your insight and your ideas and attention to detail and your support of our businesses, both large and small. And also, Wendy, thank you for your representation on the House Select Committee. I forgot to mention that earlier, so thank you for bringing that up yourself with Miles Yoshioka. So thank you for representing our communities on that committee. I appreciate your time spent with that as well. All right, so to, to kind of begin our initiative of conversing and with and learning about the different economic sectors, uh, especially during this time and how they're being impacted, uh, as the largest driver, we thought to hear from the travel and lodging industry. And so we are grateful to be joined by a number of representatives. And to start off with a Waimea perspective, I would like to welcome Melanie Holt, who is the uh, owner with her husband of the Kamwela Inn. And Melanie, the floor is yours when you're ready. Thank you so much, James. Thank you for inviting me. Um, five years ago, my husband, Tim Bostock, and I, uh, bought the Kamuela Inn. We bought it primarily because we think there needs to be a nice place to stay in Waimea because people should come to Waimea to have a more genuine experience of uh, Hawaii tourism and not the Waikiki thing. And uh, we have now um, uh, renovated about two thirds of our end in. It's come to a complete standstill right now because we're waiting for planning and permitting <laughs> uh, to complete the next third. And we're also hoping to recover from some of this before um, making any uh, further big um, investments. Uh, we were very lucky in the beginning of the virus to get the PPP loan to stay open. However, we've gone from 13 employees to six full-time and one part-time. Partially, those were a few employees, 
who decided unemployment was better or that they wanted to move. Um, so that's been difficult. Our uh, numbers are horrible. Um, for example, last year, our occupancy in October was 76.25%. Uh, this year, all we've got booked is 5.28%. And we've only got 22 of our 30 rooms um, available. Typically, guests book two to four weeks in advance. And for example, this weekend, we were almost very full for Labor Day, um, mainly with motorcycle groups who do a Labor Day thing on Big Island and they stay at the inn and uh, they all canceled because they can't quarantine. And so it's been a real struggle. And in July, when inter-island travel opened up, uh, we did pretty well. We were on 58.8%, um, and last year it was on 70.23%, so we're almost back to normal, because people were coming into Ireland to um, do something else. But uh, I'm hoping we can get some kind of a PPP thing back. I'm also hoping that there's a way of internet inter-island travel opening up. We have had several guests who've come to quarantine, who are then coming to stay with family, but they've quarantined at the end, and they've quarantined hard. They've listened to the rules, and uh, our staff have been amazingly gracious about like going and getting groceries, making sure everybody's okay in the kitchen rooms and kitchenettes. But it's difficult. We'd like to stay open as long as we can. We don't want to let go of any of our staff. But honestly, we are struggling. And, you know, we'll think we're looking at a good month, so we plan for it. And then rules change, and everybody has to cancel. And we have to honor that decision. So, it's, it's not a great place to be in right now. I, I'm hoping that small businesses will get some more support. And as I said, I'm hoping that, you know, inter-island travel can open again soon and uh, that we can be more certain moving forward. Because, you know, rather than having a money-making business, we're having a business that will subsidize for as long as we can, but who knows how long that will be. But thank you so much. And also, I wanted to say, I don't know if um, Oceans by Paina is still there, but oh my goodness, I love your recipes and your bags. They're so good. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. That's all. Thank you, Melody. Thank you for spending some time with us this evening. Appreciate that. Uh, next, we'll be hearing from the general manager of the Waimea Country Lodge, Kanani Malakawa. Kanani, the floor is yours when you're ready. Aloha ahi ahi kapo. I am Kanani Malakawa, and I am the general manager here at Waimea Country Lodge. Um, in the past year, there has been a lot of changes that happened here. Uh, back in April of 2019, uh, we have new owners, Brian and Cami Kalum. Um, they are just the owners, and then we are now managed by Castle Resort and Hotels, so that's something huge. We were managed by them before, um, and we're lucky enough to have Castle Resorts and Hotels come back in and um, manage us. We are currently under renovation, so we have a 22-room lodge here. Um, right now, we have 11 rooms that have been currently renovated and if you've been to our property before you all know that it did need a little tender loving care and so now when you pass by our uh, establishment you will see it's it's a different color now it's green we have gazebos out in the front and we also have um, more of a common area for our guests so that's something that uh, we're really excited about is new ownership new management and then the renovations that are happening. So that's the positive part for, for our company itself is that 
through this COVID, we are able to move forward with our renovations. Um, having that guest in-house allows our contractors to move forward. Um, we did have a really, really bad um, April and May here at Waimea Country Lodge. We went from 70% occupancy and reservations down to zero. So for two months, I had zero revenue, zero guests. Um, luckily, we have really good relationships with our construction companies, our traveling nurses and physicians. Um, so they were the ones that actually helped keep us afloat, um, especially our essential workers that fly in from Oahu that come in for work. Uh, we were really lucky to stay open and remain open for the community uh, to house the employees that still needed to work. Um, and like Mel said, over at Kamwala Inn, we are facing the same exact problems here. I have, uh, I have five staff members, but I'm down to three, which is, is not much of a cut, but still, you know, we had to do the PPP in the beginning, um, but we need to stay positive through this this whole COVID thing. We need to keep our our heads high. Um, like like every other business in the state of Hawaii, revenue is really really hard right now. But if we stay positive, it, it will come. I'm very lucky to have a really good sales and marketing team who helps us drive local business. Um, we get a lot of promotions that go out there through Castle Resort, so that is very very helpful. Um, in bringing in revenue to to our property. Um, I did hear Mel mention, you know, when tra the travel did open up for Inter-Island, it was really booming. You know, a lot of grandparents wanted to see their grandchildren and that was a great opportunity um, for us again to see a little bit of revenue coming in. And then again, um, the next couple of months are going to be rough, especially with the Christmas parade being canceled. Every year we're at 100% occupancy with this Christmas parade. Um, and now that it's been canceled, I'm not going to frown upon it, but the cancellations are coming in again. So we're going to see the next few months is going to be really tough, but um, I have faith in my staff. I have faith in my corporate company, in my marketing revenue management that we will get through this. Um, we are open for business. Uh, we offer really, really great comma Aina rates um, to locals. Um, I'm just really fortunate that I could share a little bit of, of why we have Country Lodge. Um, and we're still here and we're open. Uh, mahalo. Mahalo, Kanani. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being with us here tonight. Appreciate that. Mahalo. Okay, so um, let's see. Our, our next guests uh, help represent and will share with us updates, challenges, and opportunities as they relate to the larger hotels and resorts along the coast. And we are grateful to be joined by a number here. Uh, we'll be hearing from Ross Birch, who is the Executive Director of Hawaii Island Visitors Bureau. And Mr. Birch is also the incoming president for the Japanese Chamber of Commerce and Industry here on the Big Island. We'll also be hearing from Mr. Craig Anderson, who is the uh, Hawaii Island Chair for Hawaii Lodging and the Tourism Association. Mr. Anderson is also the vice president of the Mauna Kea Resort. And we'll also be hearing from Ms. Stephanie Donahoe, who is the administrative director at the Kohala Coast Resort Association. So I believe we'll be starting off with uh, Mr. Birch, if I'm not mistaken and we will go from there. So Ross, the floor is yours when you're ready. Sure, I'm gonna switch it over here, share the screen. Everybody see that all right? Okay. I was able to kind of go down a, a similar path on presentations that I've done in the path to stay very consistent. Able to take a 20, 20 minute presentation and let's see if we can squeeze it into 10. Uh, do our best here anyway. So we've got just a quick update on what the statistics look like, what our airlift is, how the cruise lines are, 
uh, the support we've been providing uh, from a COVID standpoint with basically the 14 day quarantine mitigation and follow up process. And then I'll talk a little, a little bit about the new Safe Travels Hawaii app and program. And then marketing, we actually did some marketing that was more of a stay away type of marketing in the beginning, switched to a Kamaina campaign, going into a Kuleana, which is basically more of a uh, advertisement or a, a process to, for people to use their PPE. And then we already have started the process of putting together the marketing and the plan for when it's time. And then a little bit of research travel sentiment always is what helps us along the way. So here's statistics from February. January and February for the island of Hawaii were the best two months this island has ever seen. That I can just stop right there and say those were the two best months this island had ever seen. Uh, numbers were phenomenal. We were pacing to hit record numbers uh, across the board with almost every category there was. And here are the numbers for July. The month of July and year to date, some of them are not even available because we don't even have tracking for spending. I'm always a guy who looks for the positives and right now the length of stay is 29.37 days compared to 7.3 days last year. So if we're looking for a high spot, that's our high spot. Well, we now, as we can see our visitors come in are staying 30, 60, 90 days, many of them. Uh, so that they can take advantage of it. A lot of our homeowners that are usually renting their units out are coming back and staying for longer periods of time as well. Um, it's not really a roller coaster. This is almost like a uh, extreme water slide uh, when it comes to showing the, the drasticness of, of how COVID hit us extremely hard uh, yeah, mid-March and then hitting a bottom and really starting the quarantine. You can see where the quarantine really started was on the 26th of March. And then on an international passenger standpoint, we actually started slipping a little bit sooner uh, because of their issues, not our issues, but we started slipping a little sooner and then basically hit rock bottom on that one again. Um, here's just for the month of August. Um, normally this line is on the top level at that 80 to 90, even 100 plus percentile year over year. Uh, we've been hovering at about the four to five percent versus year over year uh, all the way back since April. Here's another one of those great slides that shows that drop off drastically. Uh, this is the ADR occupancy um, from a hotel standpoint, uh, seeing an occupancy of 23.9% uh, for the week period of August is actually higher than it was in, in previous months. And ADR at $122 isn't quite the amount of money we're looking to pay the bills for those hotels that are open and an average revenue per occupied room at $30 um, you would think that uh, that'd be pretty attractive to some individuals that would want to travel out here, but it doesn't look so good on, on the books for most of our hotels, which we only have a handful on the entire island open. So those of you that are open and are available, we appreciate it. The airlift. Um, basically our airlift, it would be on the same type of scale uh, as the rest of the graphs that I've shown you. Um, the good news is, uh, I don't even know if it's good news, but the news is that as we got into the announcements of uh, pre-testing or the possibility of opening up for tourism, uh, July, the beginning of July, the beginning of August, and the beginning of September kind of had these ramp ups and our airlines kind of went along with them. So we now have currently two direct flights in the Kona, we have United from San Francisco, that's seven days a week. And then Los Angeles with Delta was five days. So in July, it was actually flip-flopped a few days. That's why you see it there. But currently we've got uh, almost direct access, two flights per day. And then 
we were doing very well on the inner island ramping up, but now they've actually cut everything back in half with the inner island quarantine as well. So now we're down to about half as many flights, both with Hawaiian and Southwest. A cruise line update, there's really not a whole lot of update. Uh, the cruise industry is, is almost basically shut down. We'd be lucky to see any type of cruises come in before December. Um, NCL Pride of America will most likely be the only cruise ship that we'll see uh, in 2020 and probably well into 2021 until the spring happens and we can see where we're at, at, at that point. Um, my job over the last few months has actually been at the airport, collecting all the arrival papers and putting them into a database so that we can track uh, who's coming in, where they're coming, what their category is. and for the arrivals direct into Kona off of our Transpac flights, we've had about almost 12,000 total passengers. Of the total passengers, we've had about 4,300 that categorize themselves as visitors. And we had 1,300 that are actually relocates. So we're seeing a higher number in individuals that are relocating to the island as well. Now that number is about double because um, we had a, about approximately 100 visitors that are that were coming Transpac through Honolulu connecting into Kona. Um, just to give you an idea, starting in, in September when we switched over the process to the electronic form, we are basically tracking about 100, 800 to 850 total passengers considering all aspects, inner island, Transpac, anybody who's arriving on the island, Hilo, Kona, uh, from anywhere, uh, we're hitting about that number of arrivals per day. So that was, this is kind of the chart that follows uh, the trend of those arrivals. And you can see shortly after the beginning of July, we had a big bump and then it came down again. And then right at the beginning of August, another jump. And then actually as of yesterday's numbers that came out, we had 247. Um, arrivals, which is again another huge spike really um, that came in at the beginning of the month. So people had anticipated, still booked their flights, was preparing for the process. So um, we saw those bump ups right at that time period. So the Safe Travels app, I hope everybody is, is either beginning to or will get familiar with this because this is the documentation you need to fill out prior to any travel that you make. Um, inner island or mainland as you return. Um, you're going to need to have a Google email account to even start the process and then you'll be able to uh, complete all the forms and have it ready to go. The difference with the electronic forms now as you arrive, we're discovering that with a QR code that you receive from this, uh, you're able to actually expedite your arrival process and it'll take about three to five minutes once you arrived at the station for clearance. If you have not done your um, program or if you have not completed this before arrival and you're gonna do it at the airport, it'll take you 20 to 25 minutes, most likely to clear. Um, so we're actually, we've been working with the airlines. They've been doing an amazing job of getting the message to their passengers as they're departing the mainland to make sure that they start this process. And we've been seeing a greater number of more and more coming through with QR, code, QR codes all set to go. And as if everybody's seen the video, or at least a portion of the video, I don't know how well this is going to come out.
that's about as much as I can handle that music. So we'll move on. You guys can go straight to the website yourself and you can watch the rest of that. Get prepared for filling out those forms. Um, going into the marketing side, we did the share aloha, which was basically our please don't come. Uh, we love you. We want to share aloha, but we would rather have you stay at home for right now. So that's definitely been on all of our social media sites. I'm sure everybody has seen that. I'm going to skip over that this one. And if, if anybody does want to watch it, we can come back. Um, we ran Kamaina specials. Um, anybody who was open that had accommodations, uh, activities, or whatever they could do, uh, we provided a platform on a statewide level uh, that gave access to um, all those offers uh, and availabilities to, to help in that process when it was available to travel in our island. And then we started uh, the PPE uh, support program in Kuleana is the name of the video. Aloha. We are so pleased to welcome the world back to the Hawaiian island. We have sacrificed a great deal to keep our island home safe. Now that we have reopened, we hope you enjoy your time here to the fullest. Get out into the ocean. Indulge in our diverse cuisine and have a first-hand experience of our thriving culture. Whenever you leave your lodging to enjoy our island home, join us in taking precautions to promote public health. And make sure Hawaii can stay open to the world. Wear a mask in public always. Remember your mask must cover your mouth and your nose. Maintain physical distance of six feet when enjoying the islands. Wash your hands frequently and know that when you do, you're sharing aloha with your fellow travelers and the people of Hawaii. Mahalo for your kokua. Thank you for your help. So that will actually be on the airlines. It'll be in, in most, most of the major market areas. And then we've already been working on our campaign and, and processes and platforms we're going to be doing our marketing to. So when it's time, we'll start launching another campaign. It's time to fly, explore, and enjoy. It's also a time to learn. You see, we have long been deeply connected. Nature is our ohana, our family. And once we understand our kuleana, our responsibility to care for nature, we'll understand that it's time to give back. Find unique experiences that connect us all. It's time. So that was just a quick, brief video. Most of it's going to be on social media. Uh, we're really looking at platforms like uh, how people are absorbing uh, their media today. And a lot of it's, it's Netflix, it's streaming, it's, it's basically on a lot of different devices. And we're looking at being on all those platforms uh, with our messaging as we move forward. Um, just a quick piece on the on the way we go about the process is we always do the, the in, in market research and make sure that we have all the information provided. Um, if you guys uh, want to receive some more information on, on these statistics, I can get them to you. Uh, but the, the overall gist of, of what's happening is, is travel sentiment is still down. There's still the, the fear of COVID um, still on the increasing side. And we're going to be fighting other things besides our own issues for a little while. Uh, and even once we start to reopen, we're going to have to start a, a much more aggressive campaign uh, once that happens. This is just an idea on to show you that there's been actually more cancellations um, the further we get into the year. And then um, the good news is there's fewer going into 2021 as far as cancellations. And then on the booking side, everybody's planning their, their visits. They're pushing them back further and further. But um, the ones who have no plans to travel in 2020 have has basically all slid down to the, that end. And we're looking at 2021 as, as being the, the start time for those considering travel. 
Hope I made it within 10 minutes, if not. <laughs> all, all good, Ross, thank you so much. Uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna welcome uh, Mr. Craig Anderson, if you don't mind. Uh, Craig, when you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you, James. Thank you. Let's see if we can share screen here. There we go. Everybody can see that. Awesome. Uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to the Kanikoa family and the Paina uh, by Ocean. I went to their website while we were in between things here and it looks fantastic. So hats off to them for some great work. Um, I'm, I'll give a brief update on, on some of the activity uh, as the island chairperson for the island chapter of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association. Um, some of this will be factual, some of it will be some of my opinions, but uh, hopefully you'll find it somewhat informative. Um, I heard a great quote recently and it, it, it went kind of like this, you know, we, we may not always, we may not all be in the same boat, uh, but we're in the same storm. And that's certainly been a theme that uh, has been reinforced on today's call. You know, a lot of us, um, you know, encountering the same issues. Um, so just let's hang in there and, and keep working together. Um, this is a view of our beach, and for those of you who've seen this, so Craig, if you don't, sorry, Craig, if you don't mind, I think you're sharing your your email, by the way. So if you want to switch over to oh, the screen, the show. Oh, thank you. Uh, stop share. Let's see how I share this. There we go. Let's try this. Is that better? That's perfect. Okay, so here we're not all in the same boat. We're in the same storm. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen the show, Naked and Afraid, uh, this is what our beach looks like right now. Uh, normally, our island would be welcoming 35,000 uh, visitors a day, uh, and we're pretty much at zero. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty scary, uh, it's a pretty scary place, uh, and some businesses are hanging in there, and others uh, not so much. Uh, this delicate balance between the economy and people's safety uh, continues to be the tension that we that, that we face in our industry. Uh, and obviously, you know, it's not an either or choice. We, we have to keep people safe. Uh, and that's been a primary focus of our industry over these past few months. Um, just some numbers. Most of the hotels on the island have been closed for five months now and counting 6,500 employees ish, 90% uh, of them or so furloughed. Um, you know, businesses have been funding somewhere in the vicinity of $20 million in, in uh, medical premium. Uh, payments to date and, and many businesses have committed to continue to carry uh, medical premiums and coverage through the end of the year. So um, hotel owners have certainly stepped up, uh, albeit during these difficult times. Um, over $900,000 that we know of in food aid to employees by various hotels. Uh, some of that comes from uh, the, the hotel owners themselves. Uh, a lot of it comes from residents within the community. Uh, many of the second home owners who live in the resort areas um, have stepped up and, and provided funding. Uh, and by the way, those are the same people who just had their property taxes raised. So uh, hopefully that'll be something that can be reconsidered in the future. Um, $100 million plus in deferred construction projects. Uh, we know many hotels had, had renovation plans that have been shelved for the moment. So a, a pretty significant impact there to the construction industry. Um, as I mentioned, some of the, the uh, care package efforts, this, uh, this, is, this, uh, this picture shows some of that work. Um, here at Mauna Kea Resort, we've been blessed to have homeowners that have funded uh, an initiative. We've been delivering these for now 18 weeks in a row, uh, about 500 bags a week. Each bag contains enough food to feed a family of four for two meals. Um, and it's, it's been a great way just for us to reconnect with our employees as they come through to pick up their bag each Friday. You know, we can look them in the eye, check in on them, see how they're doing and, and uh, share, you know, our updates on, on what we think is happening and when we might reopen. Uh, a lot of companies are feeling it. Um, you know, Hawaiian Airlines, you know, the airlines for sure, uh, but we're really concerned about Hawaiian uh, because of how much they do for our community uh, here in the state. Um, inter island commerce and travel, et cetera. Uh, and all the folks that you see on that slide there, um, I think I've got it somewhere on another slide, but for those of you who remember that $20 bill ad, 
uh, from a couple of decades ago about where a tourist dollar goes. Um, we know that it, it goes deep into our community in a lot of different fashions. Uh, so all of, those, all of those other businesses are feeling it as well. Um, our goal as, a, as an association and as a group of hoteliers is really to, to reopen as fast as we can. Uh, we've, we've come close. Uh, they keep moving the, the goal line on us. Uh, and, we, and we know the reasons why, but we also think that there, there are creative ways that we can, can, we, we can look at reopening safely uh, to take care of our employees uh, and our, and our, uh, our guests. Um, we know for sure some hotels may not open this year. Uh, we know some on Oahu have, have pushed uh, into next year. Uh, and it, it, it's, a really, it's a really tricky proposition to, to reopen. Um, we, we look at a marginal rate of return uh, for, for our resorts. Uh, we need to be at 35% occupancy to lose less money than we lose being closed. So when you think about, well, why don't you just reopen and invite some people in, it, it's, not that, it's not that easy. It, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of energy and, and staff and money uh, to reopen a hotel. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a puzzle. Uh, what have we done uh, since April? All the hotels have been working on protocols, training, signage, PPE, new equipment, uh, following CDC guidelines. The Hotel Association put together you know, some safety standard documents that uh, were blessed by the Department of Health and, and the governor and the mayors. Uh, and, we, and we use all of these as baseline for uh, our plans as we reopen. Um, We've met with Mayor Kim and his administration and have been getting great support from them uh, lately. We've been on Zoom calls with the governor uh, and, a lot, and been lobbying elected and appointed officials at every turn. Um, you know, there's a saying that if you're not at the table, you might be on the menu. Uh, and we've been doing everything we can to try to be at the table and be part of those conversations. Uh, HTA, HVCB, HLTA, that's the Tourism Authority, the Visitors Bureau, uh, and, the, and the Hotel Association have been working really closely together. The leadership of all three of those organizations have been getting along better than they have in a long, long time. And, and we're very fortunate because these times we really need collaboration between those three. Chamber of Commerce, to Wendy's point earlier, uh, she's been great in representing us at those uh, legislative meetings. Uh, the unions have been very supportive in partnering with us, uh, both in helping to, to get creative on, on medical coverage uh, and, and also being flexible with, with language and allowing us to, to be creative in terms of how we reopen and how we, how we get people back to work. Um, we've been following traveler sentiment um, uh, surveys that Ross shared, uh, and we've been working on a strategic tourism plan with uh, Diane Lay's team and Freesia, uh, and we've got a great plan. I think it, it, it uh, you know, before the ink dried, uh, COVID hit, and, and we need to add some new pieces to it, but uh, I think the key is communication, and, and I appreciate the opportunity today to, to share some of this with you. Um, resort bubbles, you may have read something about that. Uh, here at Mauna Kea, we're actually um, pursuing an opportunity with, with a resort bubble, but basically it's where we would uh, basically contain visitors within a resort and not let them come and go uh, until they, they pass some, uh, some testing uh, protocols, uh, and then we know they've cleared um, quarantine. Uh, so that's just one, uh, one option uh, that we can use to start to reopen our economy uh, and our businesses. Geofencing is another technology that we've looked at. But uh, uh, anyway, we're, we're trying to be as creative as we can and, and, uh, and look at solutions uh, other than just opening the floodgates and, and having uh, guests come back. Um, we're, we're very clear through the survey data. This, I think, is an SMS survey uh, that was done. Uh, the first one was back in May, and then this was an update in June. But we know that about half of the people uh, here in Hawaii are, 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 are cautious about reopening and bringing people, you know, to our state. So, you know, we, we want to be sensitive to that. Some of these are our employees who are, who are a little bit, you know, nervous about coming back to work. Uh, so we have, you know, our work cut out for us in terms of both training them to make sure that they feel comfortable in their role, which has changed since they left us several months ago, um, but also that they feel comfortable that the environment that we create uh, is safe for them uh, and for the visitors. Um, we, you know, we find ourselves in this kind of crossroad here 
uh, between culture, commerce, and community, and know that you know we've got a responsibility to balance all three of those, uh, which which is tricky, um, but but it's part of what we need to do. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about this tipping point and over tourism, and and that dialogue was really prevalent before COVID. Obviously, it's it's not so much now, um, but part of that strategic plan is looking at how do we reopen responsibly, how do we get the right customers. Uh, to some of what Ross shared, how do we educate visitors on how they should behave when they get here and to take care of this place, um, take care of the island, take care of the, the Aina. Uh, so I think it's a great opportunity for us to take a step back, take a deep breath and look at how we might manage tourism in the future uh, a little differently than we have in the past. Um, this is kind of what Ross showed. I mean, people are, their sentiment about traveling um, it was really was really down several months ago. It's starting to climb up a little bit. People are a little bit more comfortable getting on planes and traveling, but uh, still we think it's going to be a very, very slow recovery uh, and not just hop back to the, the 70 and 80 percent occupancies that we enjoyed before, before all this took, took place. Um, they say that hope is not a business strategy, so you know we do see glimmers on the horizon. As I mentioned, we're working on some resort bubble uh, ideas with the, with the county and getting support from the mayor and his team. Um, and, uh, you know, word of, of new tests and new testing capability uh, has been more and more prevalent lately. So uh, we know that if we can get that testing puzzle figured out, and obviously if there's a vaccine, uh, that's going to make a huge difference in terms of when we can reopen. So we continue to look for innovation. Um, through you know bubbles, testing, geofencing, et cetera. Uh, and, we, and we know that things are moving faster than ever before in the technology arena, and, and we think there's ways for us to embrace some of that. So uh, in the meantime, we've got paradise to ourselves. So um, although the beaches are closed for the next two weeks, as soon as they reopen, I encourage all of you to come down to Kanao Bay and go for a swim. Uh, and just wanna say thanks for your time today. And uh, um, yeah, let's hang in there. We're all in this together. Mahalo. Mahalo, Craig. Thank you very much for your for your updates there. I'm just going to stop your sharing. And then we'll welcome, uh, last but not least, we have uh, Ms. Stephanie Donahoe, uh, who is the Administrative Director of the Kohala Coast Resort Association. So, Stephanie, when you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, James. And thank you to everybody who's participating on this call as I have the speaker's Zoom boxes open i'm looking at all my friends and that's that's what's so amazing about this is working with captain sherry bird on our hawaii island safety and security professionals association working with councilman richards on anything that we need working with our chambers with toby and wendy and ross and craig are on my speed dial and melanie is part of such a vibrant part of our community and i'm so excited to hear about the Kanikoa Ohana and their project because it, it mirrors a lot of what we are trying to do at the Kohala Coast Resort Association. As Craig shared, you know, our resorts throughout this process have really been trying to support our community. A lot of times when you hear corporate names, Hilton, Marriott, you assume big corporate somewhere else idea of what's supposed to be happening. I think a lot of times people have the perception that huge corporations don't have a feel for the people in the community. And my experience has been that that is the complete opposite of what actually happens. As Craig alluded to, since the beginning of this terrible situation impacting our island, our Kohala Coast Resort Association members have stepped up providing more than a million dollars in food support, collectively more than $25 million in um, medical premiums assistance, and keeping their resorts open and ready, ready for when we are able to completely reopen and welcome visitors. We had the opportunity to bring Councilman Richards and other elected officials through our properties a couple of weeks ago to share some of the protocols and I can tell you just from being a community member, they're extensive. I mean, I, I wish I could see some of these things happening at other retail app options. It'd make me feel a little bit more comfortable going into some of the stores if I knew that, that all of these things were happening across the board. Um, but it just, it goes to prove that none of us are alone. 
And I want to thank James and the Waimea Community Association especially for trying to have this dialogue for a number of months now. And I, when initially when James reached out to us, I, I said, you know, things are evolving within minutes, within days. Something we thought we were going to be working on uh, has changed and we're planning plan Z and plan, you know, 270 in terms of reopening. In the meantime, we have to support all of our community members. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the CARES Act funding that's coming to our association, the Kohala Coast Resort Association, for our Kokua for our Ohana food program. It's been alluded to by so many groups. The need is incredible. I was in Waimea today during the food distribution for our Ohana, our Ohana program, and it is extensive. I mean, cars parked at the Waimea Community District Park and all the way down the road, the bypass road, it was just extensive. So we're trying to help bridge that need uh, with the Kohala Coast Kokua for our Ohana program. And that will take place beginning on September 14th. Let me see if I can get a little bit more light. There you go. September 14th uh, is when we'll be starting that program. This program will take all of the money from the CARES Act. We've been given a $900,000 grant for our association to feed 5,000 furloughed employees and their families. We're still collecting some of the data, but we're estimating it's going to be between 25 or 20 and 25,000 individuals because each gift bag that we're distributing will feed a family of four for two dinners plus pantry staples. To give you an example of what's included, I've seen the order from one of our member properties and in that food bag, it would include two pounds of ground beef, two pounds of stew beef, um, five pounds of potatoes, two pounds of onions, two pounds of carrots, mixed produce and vegetables, eggs and milk, all to feed a family of four. We'll be, do, we'll be distributing those gift bags beginning on September 14th to all of our furloughed employees, as well as the small businesses that are on the Kohala Coast. We have partnered with the shopping centers in Manalani Resort and in Waikoloa Resort. Um, to give just one example, one small business, you know, Island Gourmet Markets within Waikoloa Queens Marketplace, there are 110 employees from that small business that will be participating in this program for our Kokua, for our Ohana program. All of the food is being purchased through our existing supplier chains. So the resorts are using their relationships that they've established over years with our local farmers, with our local producers, with distributors who gather from small groups and bring those foods together and then delivering those um, pallets of food to the resorts. The resorts then volunteer. We have staff members and volunteers who give their time to put those gift bags together. And the gift bags are then going to be distributed by each property to the associates with that property. With our small businesses in uh, Waikoloa and in Manalani through the shopping centers, they're being partnered with a resort. So uh, the Waikoloa Beach Marriott Resort and Spa has partnered with Queens Marketplace, Waikoloa Land Company for the golf courses and Lava Lava and My Grill and the King Shops and they're ordering food for all of those properties. It's $900,000 that will go back directly into our community. This is not going into some big corporate bank account. This is not going to you know, make certain Hilton's bottom line um, is better. This is money that is going right back into our community to support our local farmers, ranchers, fisheries, distribution companies, and keep those supply lines open. We have set aside incredibly minimal amount of admin cost, and that is really just to fund the audit that's required whenever you get a grant of federal dollars. They require a pretty extensive audit and so we set aside a small amount, less than was even allowable for administration. Everything else has been completely donated um, by volunteers, and we're excited to see how it goes. Just to give uh, all of you uh, a little taste of what that feels like from 
receiving a federal grant because we talk about the CARES Act money and I know Wendy alluded to it and Toby talked about it. It is incredibly challenging to manage money that comes from the federal government. There is no such thing as a free lunch or a free bag of groceries. This money, we have to report back to the federal government. How many people specifically did it serve? How many people in zip code 96743 did it serve? How many people under the age of five in zip code 96743 did it serve? How many pounds of food did you buy? What was the dollar value of the food that you bought? How much in produce? How much in meat? How much in staple foods? It's an expensive reporting requirement. And I just share that with all of you because I think sometimes when we see, oh, there's all this free government money and we need to get some of that. We don't recognize the work, the detail that goes in by all of the purchasing agents and all of the food and beverage teams and all of the HR staff who are contacting their employees and saying, would you like to sign up for this program? If so, could you give me all your demographic data? Could you tell me how many 65 year olds live in your household? That's what it requires. And so it's, it's been awesome, so awesome to see this community come together, to see our resorts band together, to see the leadership that has come from Craig and from properties within the, within the Kohala Coast community to really serve our community. We are all in this together. And because we're buying locally, all of those farms can continue to operate, all those distribution lines can continue to operate, so that as we're allowed to reopen to the visitor, um, when they return, hopefully, hopefully October 1st, hopefully as soon as some of these protocols get taken care of, that we'll be able to move forward and keep those primary lines of business going, keep those farms going in the meantime, keep our employees going. I was talking to my dental hygienist today and her husband works for one of our resort properties. And she is a woman who's lived in this community her entire life. She's 64 years old. She's working part-time. And she got one of the surveys from this food program. And she said, they asked me to rate my food security. I wasn't even certain what that meant. But on a scale of one to five, how secure am I in, a, in being able to buy food for my family? And she rated herself a two. She has never, ever accepted any support or any help from anyone. That tells you where we are. I mean, we all know it, but that's, that's where we are. Our community members need help. And I'm just very grateful that I work with such incredible people who are able to step up and provide that help across the board. We are all in this together. And I just wanna thank the Waimea Community Association for everything you've been doing in this new COVID-19 reality. Thank you for the candidate interviews as we had our primary election. I watched all three nights and commented and made copies of the budget and posted it as a Facebook comment for candidates who didn't know what the budget looked like. Tim, they don't know what the budget looks like. I'm concerned. Um, but I think that we're all in this together and I, I just am very appreciative of everybody who is on these little squares in my lovely vegetable packed house right now. So thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. I appreciate your time with us here this evening. And, you know, I've kept, I kept you all on here for quite a long time. So I think we're going to start wrapping things up here in a moment. Um, so I just want to thank, first of all, thank all the presenters that joined us here tonight, this evening, and were able to update us. So before we close, I just want to say a couple words, uh, if you don't mind. Um, mahalo nui to all of our presenters for joining us and for taking your time to update our community. So very much appreciated there. This evening, we, we heard a great deal about the issues facing our economy, and we encourage you to, to do your part by staying healthy, wearing a mask, and by avoiding gatherings. And we realize that this Labor Day weekend will be different for many of us without the typical camaraderie and, or in social events, but we must work together to limit the transmission of this virus and keep each other safe. This will in turn allow our communities and our businesses to rebound and start anew. 
Thank you all to the viewers for joining us on the live stream this evening. You are welcome to revisit and rewatch this recording on the Waimea Community Association Facebook page or up on the WCA YouTube channel, which will be up at, towards the end of this week, at the very end of this week. Our next scheduled meeting is Thursday, October 1st, and we will keep you informed about the details and specifics about that day and the, the plans we have for that. Um, and behalf, on behalf of the Waimea Community Association Board, I wish you good health, be well, aloha. Have a good night.